Welcome to 5 and 5 from One Stop Co-op Shop, where I discuss five key design decisions about a game in about five minutes. I'm Michael Kelly, and today we're looking at Diceborn Heroes. I've been a fan of tactical JRPGs since I was a kid. Fire Emblem, Ogre Battle, Langrisser were all among my favorites. But the best of them all was Final Fantasy Tactics, with its great job system that let you customize your characters in whatever way you liked. Diceborn Heroes tries to capitalize on this nostalgia, with both artwork and character classes very reminiscent of Final Fantasy Tactics. But does it reach the high pinnacle set by Final Fantasy Tactics gameplay? Let's find out and get to the list. We're going to start out with a bit of a con, and that's how you upgrade in the game apart from upgrading your class. One way to build up your characters is to buy items with the monsters you defeat in each battle. But most of these items don't have very interesting effects. The majority of them are potions that just give you a one-off healing benefit. Each character also has a bounty card, and if they can complete the little mini personal quest on it, they'll get a new ability. This is kind of cool and adds a tactical puzzle to the game, but all the bounty cards give the exact same benefit, so again, it doesn't really make me feel like my characters have changed that much. The quest design is also a mixed bag, but leaning more toward the positive. The game comes with eight quests, and each one has unique enemies, unique items to unlock, and effects that change the way the battle progresses. These can be pretty fun and varied, often having some effect that you have to give up your attack for the turn to cancel, like enemies healing or reinforcements coming in. But on the negative side, the instructions on them aren't always as clear as I'd like, so I'm not always entirely sure I'm playing them correctly. Also, they do get a little bit repetitive, like many of them have allies that you can unlock that'll just show up later and do a really minor effect, so they don't feel quite as varied as they could. Next, we get to a full-on pro, and that's how you assign dice to your heroes in combat. Each hero rolls two or more dice, and they have to pick which square on their character sheet to put it on to activate a different effect. Higher die values tend to activate more powerful abilities, but they also make you more vulnerable to enemy attacks. It gives a nice risk-reward feel to the game that I really enjoy. Also, because monsters target heroes based on their assigned dice, there's a little more tactical depth than you might expect. Heroes can tank for each other by having a die value slightly lower than the other hero, or equal to them. It gives you a lot of fun stuff to think about, especially when you're playing with three or four heroes, which is how I recommend you experience the game. Now, unfortunately, that leads into my biggest con and my biggest frustration with the game, and that's how the enemies activate. After you assign your dice to your heroes, you flip an enemy attack card for each enemy. Enemies will attack a hero with a die equal to or higher than their attack value. If all heroes' dice are lower than the enemy's attack value, the enemy does nothing at all. And this is where combat sometimes feels a little bit disappointing. I've had many games where I was able to consistently put ones and twos on my heroes and the enemies would do almost nothing. Now again, I recommend you play with three or four heroes because the problem is lessened there since you have more dice and less of a chance of everybody rolling low. But in higher player count games, you can get into the other issue where if all the enemies draw the same value and attack the same hero, you could have a hero easily defeated in a single round. But thankfully, we end on a big positive, and that's the class system and leveling that are the key selling point of the game. Heroes level twice during the game, adding a level 2 and a level 3 hero to their class. But each time they level, they have the choice to maintain their current class and add on a special power from one of the other classes, or to flip their current class to get a power from them. It means that every time you level, you have 8 possibilities of how to configure your character, 64 possibilities if you take it to level 3. These classes often combo off each other, and it can be really exciting to play around with each and find fun possibilities. The only small negative here is that some classes do seem just a little bit better than others, so you might be tempted to pick them every time. But happily, there's an official variant where you shuffle the level cards together and pick two randomly to choose from, which fixes the problem. I've had a lot of fun with Diceborn Heroes. I really enjoy the varied class system, the dice play and combat, and the variety in the quests. I do wish that the items had more variety and that the quests could have repeated elements a little less often, but those are minor complaints. The only truly big complaint I have is how the enemy attack cards work, but if you play with three or four heroes, usually it's not too big of a problem, so I do recommend not playing with two heroes, except for maybe your first game. But overall, Diceborn Heroes is a fun, quick questing game, and I hope they come out with more classes and quests in the future. Good gaming, everyone, and I'll see you at the next stop.